Hi oh guys, in this video we are going to talk about Socrative and the four different things you can do with Socrative, so let's have a look. Okay, so to start a quiz we simply click on start a quiz and I have my most recent quizzes there. So let's have a look at this one and I have some options. I can have student paste um, where uh, they get immediate feedback on the questions or student paste where they get to um, go back and forth through the different questions or teacher paste where I the teacher pushes the, uh, each question along uh, at my pace so you get to choose that and you can also set um, whether or not you want the names to be included whether you want the questions randomized or not or the answers randomized and these two features are very helpful especially when you're doing a, a test in class where you don't want the person, uh, the student next to the other student looking to see what answer they put. It just mixes everything up. Disabling student feedback means that if you've put in the answers after each question, uh, this disables them from getting the answer after the question um, and disable student results. So you have a bit of a play with that. And when you've decided, you can go start. And then what will happen is, when the students are logged into the room, 2124 in my case, um, they will be able to start the quiz. Then what will happen here is as each student logs in, the list of names comes along here and this grid fills up with lots of boxes. Uh, let's just do an example of that. Okay, so I've um, opened up another window and I'm going to log in as a student. So 2124 is my room, join the room. Now I just need to put in my name. It can be my name. And then here is my quiz. So I can zoom in as the student, look at the picture, type in my answer, um, so answer so on and so forth and then here you can see that that student has um, logged in I'll just type something and then now I'm at the next picture and coming back to here I can now see that the student has answered the eighth question because remember I randomized the questions and that's the answer given while I'm doing that test I can uh, at the end of the test I should say I can finish it uh, and we can go view chart. So this is the chart and we can have a look and see how students went. So if I click on question number eight, it brings up all the answers for question number eight. And I can show the names and hide the names. And I show the answer, hide the answer. So there's the student's name. And this is good if you want to do feedback uh, on a projector or something like that. So that's a very handy feature. You can go to, through each question one by one. Um, and a very good thing. Once you've finished the quiz, you can click on report and you can get a report. You can get an Excel. You can get a PDF for each individual student that you can give to them. Um, and you can do a question by question PDF as well. You can download those reports, have it sent to your Google Drive or to an email. Very, very powerful tool, very useful way of doing quizzes. I hope that was useful and we'll see you in the next part of the video. Let's look at quick question then. Okay, so when I click on quick question, I've got multiple choice, true, false, or short answer. Um, this is useful when you have a question that you just want to ask the class verbally. You can, or you could write it up on the board. Um, you ask the question and then they get a multiple choice option of A, B, C, or D. So let's have a look at that. Um, so this is my student window. Um, I can choose multiple options, I'll go whatever and submit my answer. 
and as we can see back here um, I've got one result and that was C so depending on what my question is that could be uh, yeah anywho so true or false same sort of thing you ask a true false question and the students get to see this and they can submit their quote their answer that way or you may want to ask a short answer question this is quite useful um, let's say they can only put in one answer and you want them to put in no well let's make them anonymous they can have a name put in if you like so when I start this quiz uh, I don't have to write a question there I can um, there's a, a area here for students answer so I write in the students answer and anonymous is there's their answer I can remove that answer and so they can go again um, and I'm going to show you another thing I'll finish that let's go again short answer I'll put in um, answer the teachers question if you want to put something in there I'm going to put unlimited uh, and I'm going to put required this time so let's start uh, yes I want to start okay so answer the teachers question okay so this time I have to put in my name demo student done and this time I can answer as many as answers as I want or put in as many answers so I'm just going to put in a few things I can go again and my question might have been what is a common um, greeting in Australia right. now there's a few answers that I've put in now if everyone in the class has done that um, they Oh, I can see all the answers here and I can go right guys if everyone's put in their answers let's vote and I can turn this into a vote so going back to my student I can now vote which is my favorite response so I'm going to say g'day and I'll submit my answer and back in the teacher view g'day has got the most votes which is in this case one and that's a very useful tool for revision uh, for an exam perhaps um, it's a whole heap of things you could do with that right for space race it's similar to the quiz you select one of your pre-existing quizzes let's grab that you can determine the number of teams playing so let's go for you can have students select their own team by color or the teams can be auto assigned you can also choose the type of um, item that you want to race I'll stick with rocket for now or disable student feedback so they don't get the answer straight away and we want to enable student results or no we won't we'll start the quiz like that so what happens is I have four rocket ships ready to go let's just shrink that up a little bit and over here I've got my student window put in my name Uh, and I've been put in the blue team, so I'm here. So, oh, I've got no idea. Let's put in B. I got it wrong, so therefore the blue doesn't move. Um, don't know. Not very good at this, am I? No movement yet. Go ahead, make my day. That was a uh, sudden impact. And now we've got some movement. Um, so the idea is to see which team can get the furthest along the screen. Um, and ideally you'd put this on the on a projector so students can watch their progress or if you don't want students to know if they're getting their answers right or not you don't show them 
uh, until the end, but kind of defeats the purpose of having little rockets. Um, so that's a fun activity. Okay, so the exit ticket is a simple activity you might run at the end of a session and you don't see anything yourself as the teacher. So let's have a look at what the student sees. Um, okay, so the student enters their name and then basically it asks the students um, how well did you understand today's materials? So this is like giving feedback to the teacher. Next question, what did you learn in today's class? Um, let's just say nothing because it's quicker. Please answer the teacher's question. So the teacher might ask a verbal question such as, um, okay, what was, I don't know, maybe a particular question about the topic of the day. So they put in their answer. And then that's an exit ticket. So you could have it set up so that once they've done their exit ticket, then they can leave and they can't leave until they've done it or something like that. And then all the students' answers will get listed and you can have a snapshot of how your class went for that session right there on your screen. Very handy little tool.